While the position of Galactic Emperor was only ever held by Palpatine within the Empire, there was one other man who not just wanted the position but was almost able to take it other than maybe Darth Vader in Episode 5 or 6. Grand Moff Tarkin. While not explicitly stated within the movie version of A New Hope, both the audio drama and the novelization of the movie mention Tarkin's ambition, and today we're going to focus specifically on the analysis provided by Jason Fry and Paul Urquhart, author of The Essential Guide to Warfare and The End Notes, along with how some cut content was going to bring this point more directly into the forefront of Imperial machinations. This analysis is built on a few points of contention that existed in the Empire, and makes reference to several events and scenes within Episode 4 to establish a bit of a loss of control for Palpatine and Vader during the period of that film, despite the completion of the Death Star as an unimaginably horrific superweapon theoretically cementing their positions, but in reality elevating Tarkin above either of them. The Death Star was essentially the culmination of the Tarkin Doctrine in his own personal efforts, where ruling through fear was the primary way to combat the stateless strategy of the Rebel Alliance and similar groups. The Navy, Tarkin argued, would never be sufficient to stop the Rebels, but as soon as the Rebels were able to establish enough control over an area that they controlled territory of their own, the Empire simply had to blow it up. There would be no need to hold every inch of territory in the Empire with Star Destroyers if people were too afraid to fight, and this actually gets to a misunderstanding people have about the Tarkin Doctrine, where they try to apply that specifically to the design of the Star Destroyers, which fits in in some ways, but it's not really what the Tarkin Doctrine was about. After all, fleets can run away, but planets that aren't named Zonama Seacott can't. Some within the Navy, like Conan Antonio Mahdi, the Navy's chief representative on the Death Star, followed this belief, and along with Tarkin, they saw the chief problem of the Empire being the Generationals who ran the Imperial Navy and had been serving in the Republic Judicial Forces for generations, still holding their own service above the good of the Empire. The Navy in general opposed a lot of what was going on with the Death Star, and it was a power struggle between the two to see who would hold the role of protector of the Empire as their primary position, and who would elevate themselves above the other. In the Death Star, Tarkin and his assembled supporters believed that they had the key to the accumulation of their own power. Upon its completion, the power was already increased by Palpatine shutting down one of the few checks on the governor's power, the Senate. Reliance on the Navy to protect the governor's power was now sidelined, and Tarkin, along with the others like him, believed that they no longer needed their support quite as much. Fry describes the conference scene in A New Hope with Tarkin and Vader's confrontation as being akin to coup plotters. Mahdi decries Vader as just being the Emperor's pet, and Tarkin is ordering Vader around. A cut passage from the Essential Guide to Warfare on Mahdi describes how he was trying to both undermine Vader and encourage Tarkin to use the station to depose Palpatine. Mahdi argued that whoever held the station would be able to become Emperor in short order. Fry does argue that the use of the Death Star by Tarkin in Episode 4 indicates a willingness to do just that. Rather than going to destroy a rebel base, the utter rimborn Tarkin takes the Death Star to destroy Alderaan, another rich core world which sends a message to both a lot of rebels as well as a lot of Imperials. Crucially, he does this without authorization from anybody. Unfortunately for Tarkin, he was incorrect in what he thought fear would do, because this pushed many of those Imperials over into the open arms of the Rebel Alliance. To many of these political leaders, Palpatine as a Sith Lord wouldn't necessarily have been a concern to them. We just have to look at how their attitude towards Vader was when they think about the battle station and the power that it's given them. They're essentially treating it as a personal victory lap, even to the man who's theoretically there representing their Emperor. Fry points to some of the evolution of the character role throughout the original trilogy as part of why this becomes less applicable later on in the trilogy. By Episode 5 and 6, Vader and Palpatine are the ones ultimately involved in the power struggle with each other, but Episode 4 has Tarkin a lot more involved in this, with Vader being the less viable candidate. He says, quote, Recall that when A New Hope took shape, Emperor Palpatine was a more Nixonian politician than a Sith Lord, out of touch and controlled by bureaucrats, and the Star Wars novelization says Tarkin's ambition is to be Emperor. Now we can see Vader's more likely role. With the Emperor shut away and out of touch, he's been sidelined as a Sith relic and is trying to ride Tarkin's coattails back to power. Tarkin sees Vader as a useful henchman, but clearly hasn't made him any promises, which is why Mahdi feels free to challenge him so publicly and brazenly." End quote. It's Fry's assertion that, had Tarkin not been drawn away to Yavin, his plan after Alderaan could easily have been to go to yet another core world which threatened his own personal power. Coruscant. The prospect of the Death Star being used on Coruscant is a pretty horrifying one, and it's possible even Tarkin wouldn't have been 
been willing to actually use the weapon in that way. So it's hard to know whether he was expecting capitulation by the fleet or other groups, or even the Emperor personally, or whether he was truly about to annihilate the center of galactic power to rule from Ariadu. But I personally think whatever the particulars of this situation, it's a pretty compelling idea, and was an interesting way to flesh out some of the mentions of Tarkin's ambitions in the novel and radio drama. I do think with how the characters evolved over the original trilogy, and Fry does acknowledge this, that we moved away from the idea of a potential Emperor Tarkin, and it does seem like even if Tarkin had gone to Coruscant, he would have had a lot more to face than uh, what he might have been expecting. We do know just how powerful Palpatine was, and he probably wouldn't have gone down without a fight. But I think what is clear is that all these Imperial leaders who didn't really understand the Force could have easily looked past that, and it seems in line with what Tarkin was doing to think that he was hoping to install himself as the Emperor, using the power of the Death Star to back him up. That's going to do it for today though. If you've enjoyed, consider leaving a like, subscribing, or turning on the notification bell for more. Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.